Right, we say OK, and there it is. Let's add our camera, layer new camera. It's an 800 again. There we've got our camera. Let's select our element layer. And what we do now is we want to rotate these blades. So again, group one, particle replicator, rotation, except this time we are rotating around the x-axis. So let's set a keyframe at zero, go to the end of our timeline. I found I liked a value of around 56 degrees, plus a little bit of extra random rotation. If I scrub through there, we can see we're getting our rotation. Um, I tell you what, if I actually just offset the model, the rotation will become a lot more apparent. The problem now is if we just try and offset the Y axis, funny things happen to our rotation, which we don't want. So we'll leave our Y axis at zero, and instead we will come down here to the world transform, and we will rotate the Y axis here. So there we go, and now if I do a little RAM preview, there we can see our spinning. Of course, it's lacking our motion blur, so let's address that. Switch on motion blur for the layer, switch on motion blur for the comp. Go to our render settings, motion blur, turn up the samples to say 12. Not perfectly smooth, but smooth enough. I mean, we could maybe go a bit higher, 18. That's gonna give us a usable result, I'd imagine. I'll just do a brief RAM preview. There we go. Now you can obviously craft this motion blur to have a much smoother, cooler, filmic look. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it there. And I'm just going to set our world transform the Y rotation back to zero. Now what you want to do is go to your model shot. So if we go to our master comp, there's our model shot. Let's just double click it so it opens the original file. There it is. And what we need to do now is find a way to parent our tail rotor to the actual tail rotor section of the model. So we're going to use After Effects' old school tracker. So we'll make sure the layer is selected, animation, track motion. And before we position this tracker, let's just add a null object to apply the track to. So I've added a null click back on my layer that I'm doing the tracking in. What I want to do is move this tracking device to track this tip of the tail here. Come down to my tracker dialog box in the bottom right here. Click on edit target. Say I want to apply the track to the null that I've just added. Say OK. And then let's click on the play button which is track forwards. Analyze forward. So let's see what it does. There my model starts to move. And at this point, it looks like the track is following it quite well. In this view now, you can actually see how much blue hairline and mess is still left around my model, even after that matte choker. Fortunately, it's not too visible in my comp. Right, so there we go. It's done the track. I'm going to click Apply, bottom right. Yes. Right, and in this comp now, we can see this null object represented by this little red square. If I scrub the timeline, there it goes. It tracks nicely and follows the tip of that tail. So the next step is to bring my tail rotor comp into here. Let's just search for it. There it is, tail rotor. Um, and now, quite importantly, is the tail rotor needs to be dropped underneath the model because obviously if I put it above the model, then you know we're going to run into problems. So let's stick it at the bottom underneath the model. Let's pick whip it and parent it to the null. Let's scale it down a bit. Well, first let's position it, I suppose. So it needs to be positioned around there or there. Scale, let's scale it down to something a bit more subdued and realistic. Let's start with that size for now. And now obviously the next problem, as you see, is as I scrub through, the angle on our blade, our tail rotor blades, is not changing with the model. So if I scrub through here, I see that my first radical angle change on the model starts to happen around here. So I'm going to go to my tail rotor comp just after three seconds. Open up here in the layer effects element. 
um, will transform. And my Y rotation, I'm going to create a keyframe. Then I'm going to go back to my model comp. I'm going to scrub forward. And I can see, okay, so the move eases out from that point, And then it seems to sort of ease in and dock over here somewhere. There we go, around there. Does a nice ease in. And if I look at the angle on that helicopter, I'd say it hasn't quite rotated through 45 degrees, maybe half of that, half of 45 degrees. So if I had to go back to my tail rotor and do a guesstimate, let's just say it's done hmm, 25 degrees. Let's go back to our model shot. Hmm, that looks a bit extreme. Back to our tail rotor. Let's drop that down to say 21. 21 degree offset. Back to the model shot. That looks a bit more appropriate. So let's carry on scrubbing. Our model seems to hold that rotation for a while. And there the ease out starts again. So position my playback head there. Back to tail rotor. I'll set another keyframe for 21 degrees. So the blades stay at 21 degrees for this period of time. Back to my model shot. Carry on towards the end of the timeline. I can see the helicopter straightens out a bit, but not quite all the way back to where it was at the start. It's probably about a, again, if I had to thumb suck, I don't know, maybe a 10 degree offset. So let's try 10 degrees here. Back to the model shot. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty believable. Um, one thing I didn't really like is in the beginning here is the blade looks very thin. So let's just, that first keyframe, instead of it being zero degrees, let's offset it to say three or four degrees. There we go, just so we start with a bit of angle. Maybe three. Um, and then we need to set a right click keyframe assistant to easy ease out. And over here at this keyframe, Right click keyframe assistant, easy ease in. And same thing here for this next keyframe, easy ease out. Okay, so let's quickly go back to our model comp. I'm gonna do a RAM preview just to get an idea. Let's set the resolution to half just to make it a bit faster. And here we go, RAM preview. And here we go. So, sure, not a perfect match, but close enough. I think it'll work for the purposes of what we're doing. Um, one thing now as I look at it, these, uh, these blades look as if they just need to move across a little bit. So I'll just access position and shift them left. And then I think we need to apply a levels here just to get them into the same kind of darkness value as the helicopter. So somewhere around there I suppose. Right, and then let's jump back to our master comp to see how it's looking there. And that is not looking too bad at all. Let's do a RAM preview. Right, there we go, not looking too bad. So I'm happy with that. I think we are ready to go and add our finishing touches, which is a layer of heat haze. So I'll start by adding a foreground layer of heat haze using an adjustment layer which I've just applied, layer adjustment layer. And to this top adjustment layer, I'm gonna apply effect distort turbulent displace. And whoa, you can immediately see what that does. Um, it looks pretty crazy. So let's change these amounts, or let's actually start with evolution. So I'll keyframe the evolution at zero. I'll go to the end of our animation and I will set another keyframe for say 80 revolutions. If I quickly show you what this is doing, I'll just show you a few frames of it. You get the idea. So that's our shimmering heat haze. Obviously the scale is way out at the moment. So we will pull the amount and the scale down to kind of more believable, a more believable region. So let's say amount 17 and the size we'll take down to say seven and now if I do a small RAM preview, there you go. And now you see you're getting that kind of shimmering heat haze effect as you would expect on a hot day out in the desert in Afghanistan. So that's great. That's our one layer of heat haze. And like I say, that's our foreground layer on top of everything. Let's add, well, let's duplicate that layer. So I'll click it, layer, 
mm, sorry, edit, duplicate. And I'll put this next layer behind our foreground mountain, but in front of our helicopter. So we now have two heat haze layers. And now it's important that they are different scales. This foreground layer, I guess you could argue, is the heat haze coming off this foreground mountain. And then the next layer, which is behind the mountain, is the heat haze that's kind of in this valley where our helicopter is rising up. So the second one we want to make, we can leave the evolution the same, but we want to make the amount, um, I guess, higher, but the size a whole lot smaller. There we go. And you can see how it kind of breaks up the edge of our helicopter if I just go back to full size. There you can see what it's doing. Um, yeah, you again, you have to kind of play with a setting that you think feels right here. Maybe I've added too much. Maybe that's more believable. Um, let's just go back to half res. And let's do a RAM preview of that. There, it gives you an idea of the heat haze that we've got. Great. So the final step now is just to add some small realistic touches. I'll take this master comp and I'm just going to drop it into a new comp. And I want to add the slightest amount of camera shake as if our long lens camera is mounted on a tripod and is being sort of buffeted and moved by the wind. So I'll start by scaling this layer up to about 102%. And then I'm going to use an expression now on my position channel. So I need to alt click to access expressions and I'm going to type wiggle bracket, let's say 10 times a second, no, 15 times a second and magnitude, let's say three pixels, close my brackets and let's play that back, see what we get. All right. So there you can see the shot we're getting now, just a very, very subtle thing, but it just, to my eye anyway, adds a, a nice layer of realism as if a cameraman really was out there in the, in the mountains being pushed around by the wind. Now our last step is to obviously just apply a grade to this, and again, this is a very personal thing. You can do whatever you like here. I'm just going to try and give it that typical Ridley Scott look. So I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. To this adjustment layer I'm going to apply a levels um, and looking at the shot now if I look at my helicopter I actually think this foreground mountain quickly needs to be crushed a bit further so I'm going to go back to my master comp click on a foreground mountain apply levels to that as well color correction levels and I'm just going to crush my shadows a little more than they were there we go happy with that back to our grading comp Back to our adjustment layer where I've just applied a levels. And over here now, overall, I want to crush the shadows a bit, say to about there. And now I want to apply effect. Quite a nice little grading trick is to use color correction, color balance, tick, preserve luminosity. And what works very well is to give your shadows a slightly cyan look. And you would do that. You see each channel here, shadow, mids, and highs has a red, green, blue. So if you want to make the shadows look cyan, you'd pull a bit of red out of them. There we go. You can see it happening already. And now the highlights, you give a nice warmth. So in order to do that, red and green added together make yellow. But we want to be slightly orange. So I'll push the red channel and push a little bit of green into my highlights. Oh, too much. There we go. A bit more red. And then our mids, I'll put just a slight bit of red in there. There we go. And there we have a more, I guess, I'd, I like to call it my Ridley Scott grade, but it probably falls horribly short. Um, but there we go. That that illustrates the, the technique rather well, I think. Um, obviously, you can spend a lot more time finessing this, really making it your own, adding some noise uh, or grain you know, really crafting the motion blur on those blades, maybe adding some little flares and highlights to these hotspots on the windshield. Um, you can spend a lot more time making your heat haze more realistic, but I think what I've shown you today illustrates the, the basic techniques for achieving good looking shots using cheap model kits. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please stay tuned. There will be some more videos coming in the near future. 
and um, yeah please subscribe and feel free to comment on this video and thanks for watching i'm scott newman goodbye <laughs>